brain's regulation of the body, the predictive regulation of the body, is the technical term is allostasis. But when I'm explaining this to the public, I use a metaphor. And, you know, all metaphors are wrong, but some metaphors are less wrong and useful. So the metaphor that I use is um, your brain is running a budget for your body. And it's not budgeting money, it's budgeting glucose and salt and oxygen and water and all the nutrients that you need to stay alive and well. And so you can think about withdrawals from that budget, like burning glucose or using up oxygen. Um, You can think about deposits, like sleeping and eating. Um, You can think about, you know, savings Um, so when you're with a friend who you trust and, you know, everything you do actually is just slightly less metabolically expensive, right? And you can also think about taxes. Um, like if you are stressed, socially stressed within two hours of eating a meal, that same meal will cost you a hundred and the equivalent of 104 more calories in the inefficiency that you will metabolize it because of that stress. So when we say that people are taxing on us, yeah, we like it's literally their true. their yeah. language works. Yeah, their like, language right. works. So the way I describe it is that you can think about affect as a quick and dirty summary of the state of your body budget. If things are going reasonably well, then you'll feel okay. You might even feel pleasant. If you're running a deficit in your body budget, then you're going to feel fatigued or, or distressed. You know, when, when, things, when you're feeling really worked up, it probably means that something's uncertain somewhere. <laughs> so I just think about these as like quick and dirty ways of thinking about your, your, what, your, what your affect means. And, um, and then oftentimes, as we've said before, emotion regulation that is controlling emotion really actually is not so much about changing the meaning of affect, it's changing the affect. Um, and um, so it's useful to understand that affect is tied to the state of your body, or actually what it's tied to is your brain's beliefs about the state of your body. Your brain is modeling the state of the body and that's interoception, that's the technical word. Interoception is not your awareness of your body, it's your brain's modeling of your body, what your brain believes to be true about the metabolic state of your body. And that's how I think about affect. That's how I think about my own affect. That's, and my daughter actually, who um, you know, was depressed for, so I should say depression is like a bankrupt body budget. And I think the reciprocity piece here feels really... Uh, really strong. Well, that's a really interesting thing about um, about the synchrony work, right? So there's work that if you research that if you put people together who don't even know each other, but if they if they like each other and they they have a sense of trust even after a couple of minutes, they start to synchronize their physical signals. Their heart rate starts to synchronize, their movements start to synchronize. Their heart rate probably synchronizes because their breathing starts to synchronize, right? And it's really interesting to see what you what you typically see is that Who is pacing and who is leading? Like one person is the leader and then the other person is the pacer. There's research showing that, um, especially in the creativity, you know, sector, innovation sector of the economy, the best predictor of performance on the job is the extent to which people feel, I mean, after you account for sleep and, and, you know, watering and sleeping and feeding, right? Like the, that, um, the best predictor is the amount of trust that you have in your team, and in your managers. Because if the world is predictable, it could still be, things could be hard. Right? Even when things are unpredictable, you have people you know, who have your back. And so basically what you're doing is you're, you're, um, they're making you know, deposits or savings. They're causing savings in each other's body budgets. So their, their resources can be spent on the harder things, which is, you know, failing and, you know, having to pick yourself back up and try again, which is, you know, partly what you do when you're an innovator. The best thing for a human nervous system is another human. And the worst thing for a human nervous system is also another human. And so you really want to be around the people who make you the best, the best version of yourself that you could be. And that doesn't mean that you always get a savings. Like sometimes you're, sometimes you're taking care of that person. And so 
you're you're absorbing some of the their burden, right? And vice versa. But I would say the research on, you know, social isolation and loneliness and so on shows us that you know, well, along with research on synchrony, and there's just a whole bunch of research to to suggest that um, we are the caretakers of each other's nervous systems. And it doesn't matter what your opinion is. Like it doesn't, you know, it's just, but we just, that's how we evolved as a species. 